good morning or should I say good afternoon because it is just after one o'clock right now. I have finished all of my Monday morning responsibilities. I had a lot of adulting things going on this morning and just things that I had to do. It was no fun. You know, it was like calling the bank, calling my accountant. Have, I had appointments. I had things that I had to get done this morning. And so I am just done adulting for the day. You know, I'm tired. And so it's just after one o'clock. I was actually able to wrap up everything a little bit earlier than I thought I would. Like I thought I was going to have to do stuff later on into the day, but I've finished up all of my adult tasks for the day. And so now I have the rest of the day to pretty much do whatever I want. Last night I was actually able to finish editing our podcast episode like late last night at like 11. I just like sat there like a zombie and finished editing it so that I didn't have to do it today. And so it feels good, you know, because I feel like I'm being productive and I'm ahead of all the things that I want to be doing. So right now I'm actually planning to drive down to this park that's in the city where I used to live. So it's kind of like a 30 minute drive down to this park, but I love this park so freaking much. There's a little coffee shop like right on the water and it's right over this like bay area and it's just really relaxing and I really love going there and you've seen me go there a few times if you've watched my vlogs before so I'm gonna go down there probably get an iced coffee and just chill for a little bit and I'm gonna be listening to the butterfly garden on audio like on the drive down there and then while I'm down there I'm probably gonna walk along the beach area for a little bit and just have a nice chill afternoon you know that is the plan so let's do it <laughs> I just pulled up at the park right now and while I was driving I got 51% of the way through the audiobook so now I'm on page 142. My god this book is definitely a hard read because there are things happening that I am just like so disturbed and this man this gardener man is just he's so repulsive the things that he's doing it's just like God, I don't know. It's just, it's a really tough read and it's not easy to listen to and it's making me feel a little nauseous. But on that note, I'm still gonna get coffee because I feel like I need it. I might actually get a frap because they make these really good um, like caramel fraps with like coffee in them. So I think I might get a frap. And yeah, it's looking really beautiful out today. I think today was like the perfect day to come to this park because it's kind of like on the cooler side. So like it's cozy enough that I can wear this, you know, crew neck comfortably. But it's, um, it's not that warm today. It's just kind of like a nice day outside. So we're going to go get coffee and we're going to go sit by the water and read some more of this book. <laughs> It's a little bit later in the afternoon. It's like just after three o'clock and I just left the park. And oh my God, the park was just so great. Like I genuinely love going there so much because getting that fresh air and just kind of like being by the water, taking some deep breaths, like it just really calms me down and it really just makes me feel relaxed. So I had a really great time there. I was able to get my frap that I wanted and I, you know, got up to 70% of the way through the book. And this book is just 
ooh, it's like hard to read, but it's also very interesting. And I'm just really curious to see where this is gonna go because there's kind of this like mystery that's still happening throughout it. Um, right now, I was on the way home. I was like about to go home, but then I thought, you know, I'm really close to one of the local bookstores down here that I always go to to like check to see if they have ARCs. So I thought, why not just go and check it out while I'm down here, you know, see if they have anything interesting. Let's go to the bookstore, you know, like let's see what they got. In America all of my adventures and I just, you know, just got home, took a quick shower, and I finished listening to The Butterfly Garden on audio. And gosh, I have such mixed feelings on this book. Like, I just don't know how I feel about it because there are some things that I really enjoyed about this book and then there are some things that I found to be a little, like, unrealistic. So in this book, you know, as I was saying in my last daily vlog, I kind of gave a general premise on it, but we're basically following this woman named Maya who is a survivor of this really awful situation where this man called the gardener was basically kidnapping and abducting these young girls and calling the girls his little butterflies. And, you know, this man is really creepy. This whole situation is so disturbing. It's so fucked up. I really liked the way that this story was told. You know, I thought it was really interesting because we get Maya's point of view from like when, like even before she was a part of this butterfly garden and then how she ended up getting involved in it and how her time was spent there and her relationships with the other girls. Like we get her point of view and her experiences, but then in alternate chapters, we get the point of view of two FBI agents who are currently in the process of interviewing her and trying to figure out the full story. Something that I think is really unique about this story is that I really like that, you know, there's this kind of mystery going on throughout the whole story because the detectives are feeling like she's holding something back or she's holding back information and that she has some kind of involvement or like there's more to the story than like what what just meets the eye. And I really liked that because the mystery aspect of like how she might have been involved or like what the detectives were thinking about her really kept me invested throughout the whole story. I feel like, you know, I've seen so many different reviewers either say that this book is really like fast paced and that you'll want to binge it all in like one sitting, or I've seen the reverse of that where people are saying this book is really slow and nothing really happens. I personally found the writing style to be pretty fast paced and pretty interesting because I liked the way that it would go back and forth between Maya's point of view and like kind of see what would happen on like a day-to-day -day life in this butterfly garden but then I liked how it would go back and forth to the detectives kind of like interrupting the story and like asking questions. I thought it was a really interesting storytelling style. I also really did like Maya as a main character. I thought she was really smart. She was really intelligent. Like I just liked the way she talked about the story. I loved her relationship that she had with some of the other girls but I guess my biggest issue with this book is the fact that you you really have to suspend your disbelief on a lot of different things. I just find some things about this story like a little hard to believe and, and especially like with some things at the end I'm like bitch what? <laughs> like there are some aspects at the end that I'm just like I don't know if I buy that and I know I did actually check on Goodreads that this is the first book in a series which is also kind of strange because I feel like this book totally works as a standalone and should have just been a standalone like I don't think there needs to be more to this story and to be honest I don't think I would be interested in reading any of the next books in this series because I do think that this story works as a standalone and then I guess another nitpick kind of thing that I have about this story is that I do wish that 
that the detectives had been a little bit more fleshed out because for them to be such a big part of the story, I feel like I really didn't even know anything about them, like not even the most vague thing about them. But I do appreciate how fleshed out Maya was as a character and I understand that it's not really about the detectives, so like maybe that doesn't even really matter. But I feel like Maya was the only character in this book that felt really fleshed out to me and I feel like I didn't really know any of the other characters very well, even like the gardener himself and like the other girls that were down there like I just felt like I didn't know them that well even though I did appreciate the relationships that she had with them and it was still a really interesting read you know with all that being said I think I'm gonna give this like a 3.5 out of 5 stars it's not like a new favorite thriller or anything but it's definitely still something I would recommend if you're looking for something you know kind of creepy and dark like this I'm still glad that I read it though because I've had this book on my TBR for literally years I feel like in a way this book is everything that I expect expected it to be and I don't know if that's like a good thing or not because I feel like it's a good thing because I went in with the right expectations but it's also kind of a bad thing I think because there wasn't necessarily anything about this book that really shocked me it was all kind of like something I would have expected to happen you know but anyways yeah the butterfly garden it finally happened I'm so stoked about it and I also am so stoked because I went to my cute little bookstore with the arcs and I found four different arcs that I am so excited about um if you didn't know my local book bookstore they get a bunch of arcs like sent to the bookstore and because they can't resell them they put them on a donations shelf so you basically pay like a two dollar donation to the bookstore for every arc that you take it's absolutely incredible and I love it because I think it helps arcs be circulated back into the world. So the first book they had there that I'm so freaking excited about is Aurora by David Coep and oh my god this is like one of my most anticipated books of the year. This one's like a thriller and from what I understand it's like an apocalyptic kind of situation like something's happening to the world and then we kind of follow this um, complicated midwestern family as they're dealing with it. So like holy shit I'm so excited to finally have this in my possession. Like, I'm actually considering reading this one during Summer Ween because I'm just so hyped about it. I also found this copy of Burn Down Rise Up, which this one is a young adult novel that I've had my eye on for a little bit because the premise says Stranger Things meets Get Out. Like, excuse me, what? And so, I don't know, like, that is pretty much all I need to hear. Like, those are two of my favorite things. And so, I was really excited to find this there because I was gonna put the audiobook on hold at my library, and now I have the physical copy as well. And then I also found an ARC copy of On Rotation, which this one is a romance novel that involves doctors. That just looks super cute. This is another one that I've had my eye on for a while. I have the audiobook on hold at my library right now, so I was like, this is perfect. And it says it's perfect for fans of Seven Days in June and shows like Grey's Anatomy. So I don't know. I'm not really a fan of Grey's Anatomy, but I'm a huge fan of Seven Days in June. So sign me up. And then the last book that I found, I literally just showed this book cover to my sister the other day. And I was like, this is one of the most beautiful book covers that I've ever seen in my life. And I don't even care what the book is about. I kind of want to read it just because of the cover because I'm shallow. But look at it. Oh my God, I found it there. It's called Out There Into the Queer New Yonder. And this one is an arc copy it's actually a collection of short stories which is pretty cool and this one it says 17 of today's most exciting lgbtq plus ya authors have penned original short stories in this extraordinary new anthology featuring queer teens in the future so it's kind of like a sci-fi fantasy book from what i understand and there's tons of authors there's 17 authors that wrote short stories in here some of the names i recognize and some of them i don't like k ankrum is the name i recognize mason deaver uh leah johnson claire can like those are all some names that i really recognize so i am so excited about this and once again you know this cover is absolutely stunning i mean just look at it it looks like fucking outer space in like orange and new york and it, it just looks beautiful like i'm kind of obsessed with it so i just bought it because i was like i need this on my bookshelf it's like i don't care i need it whatever it is don't care we'll read it but seriously i'm thinking i might um start aurora during summerween i don't know i'm i'm torn between starting this one and then i also just got year invited from book of the month so i feel like maybe i'll have my patreon vote on which one i should read during summerween because i am very excited for both of them and i can't make these decisions by myself <laughs> Anyways, my dad just let me know that he's starting dinner right now. He's making hot dogs, and then I think we're gonna have leftover mac and cheese, so I'm gonna go eat dinner. Alright, the poll is created on my Patreon, ready to go. Vote for my next read, the two options. Alright, so let's go ahead and publish now. 
and we'll see what wins this poll. And tomorrow I will start whichever book won this poll. Hello, what's up? It's like eight o'clock or around eight o'clock at night now. And I think I want to bake something so that I can complete the challenge of, you know, baking a treat. That is one of the prompts. I know the original plan is to do something that's like, you know, fall related. But recently I've seen on Instagram, there's this account that I follow and her name is Diane Morrissey. And she posts all these really fun recipes that I've been wanting to try. And recently she's posted this one called chocolate puff pastry pockets. And I will have to link the Instagram down below if I remember to do that. Um, but she basically shows you how to make it. And it's essentially these little like puff pastry sheets, but then you add in chocolate to the middle of them. And then she said, you can also add, you know, coconut Coconut and pecans and nuts and things like that. So I think I'm gonna try to attempt these because they just look freaking amazing. And like, I'm not a freaking baker or anything, but like, we're gonna give it our best. I know, I, I think it should just like tear apart in your hands, like not. Ta -ta -ta. Does it look beautiful? Look at that. Whoa. Ooh, it's hot. Ah. <laughs> beautiful. Mm. I'll get Flaky. Fork. Mm. It smells so good. Yeah, be careful because chocolate carries heat. The coconut really made it a surprise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here she is. She's a beaut. And let's give her a go. Oh my god. The sound of it crispy. Really good. Mm. It's hot. Mmm. Mm. That, that try one is really good. Whoa! They're crispy huge. and they're crispy and big right. boys. Um mm. pastry. Chocolate pastries. Mmm. Good. Imagine eating oh. with the. Uh, good. Dude, it's so, so many fucking hot. Ways. I feel like they're good, but I think they would be better with Nutella instead of chocolate. Mm -hmm. Even better. You know? Uh, yeah. That Agreed. This is my thing. You don't like it? Strawberry. What? Nutella. <laughs> Yeah, strawberries and Nutella would have been it. Yeah, strawberries That would actually make it more fall-ish if I put apples and cinnamon in there. Oh! Hello, hello. It is 10 o'clock on the night of night four of Summerween. And I'm so glad that I was able to actually daily vlog today and actually get shit done. Those little dessert things that I made were freaking fantastic and so good. And they, they kind of tasted like almond joys, but like in a pastry puff thing. It was really good. 
I, however, if I made it again, I would somehow try to figure out how to get Nutella in that thing because I think it would be a lot better with Nutella, but otherwise it was really good. And again, I'll have it linked in the description if you wanna make it yourself. But I think the plan for the rest of the night is that I'm going to lay in bed and start on this dissolving classroom manga by Junji Ito. Um, I should be able to finish this no problem in one night because it is, you know, pretty short, at least in comparison to some of Junji Ito's other stuff, it's pretty short. So I'm gonna be reading this tonight, which you will see in my next vlog. Depending on which book wins the poll on my Patreon, that'll also determine which book that I'm reading tomorrow. So, so much to look forward to. Thank you so much for being here for another day of Summerween, and please keep me updated in the comments how Summerween is going for you. I would love to know. Have you found a new favorite? Have you read anything spooky that has scared you? Fill me in on all of the tea in the comments. I will be reading them, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon with another vlog. Bye!